Hello, my name's Gary Gannon. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about um, when I was in York and we went to a meeting, a um, masterclass with Lisa Gunn, who was a really cool person actually, I really liked her, she had a really cool vibe, she's an editor, um, so she is, really good editor. Um, we watched some of her clips, which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, I can't get comfy, sorry. It's very important when you're analysing media. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you about it. I wrote a lot of pages, so this is going to be quite a long video, but it's media. We love it. So, um, the thing was called The Craft of Editing. Um, and like I said, it was Lisa Gunn who um, described herself as being lucky and hardworking. She had an English degree because um, she was obsessed with storytelling. And um, she worked as an executive at an advertising agency, which she hated. So she became a runner um, in Soho. Um, and then she finally, as, and I quote, got balls. Um, and she decided she was going to get what she wanted. And she got an assistant job at an advertising agency um, and got to do adverts, so she did, which I'm going to come on to later. We then watched a clip of her when she edited Play by Samuel Beckett with Alan Rickman and really, really good actors, three main actors. It was brilliant. Um, you should look it up on YouTube because it was amazing. I was really like, wow. Um, it really drew you towards the editing. Um, she said it was amazing because um, it was drawing the attention to the editing and the cut. And normally when you watch um, a thing, if the editing's really good, if you watch a movie or a, a commercial, if the editing's good, you don't realise it. But this, you were forced to realise it and you were sort of amazed by how snappy it was. Um, she said, I spent my life trying to make people melt into the piece. And I like that. Um, she said Beckett was very specific about directing. He used the camera as a beam and through ed edit, um, he wanted to be in the blink of an eye. He wanted it to be as if it was the blink of an eye. And she said, uh, she kept talking about this clip and saying that it was all about rhythm. Um, and I think that's very important that not only do you work in tandem with the director and the editor, but also um, that there is a bit of freedom. And, ooh. <laughs> ooh, there's my dinner. Um, and also that you um, focus on the rhythm that the script gives you, because that's important, because that is the way the edit should go to make it more flowing and nicer to the audience. Um, normally I try and cut from the inside of the film, not the outside. Um, it's because about, um, it became about rhythm and the narrative of the cut. She kept going on about also talking about how the editing is like another rewrite. Um, that it, you make the narrative in that room. And it's very important that no matter how you edit it, you are continuing the narrative, and that is clear throughout the film. Um, she said she worked harmoniously with the director, but he still gave her freedom, um, which is going back to what I said. It's important, I think, and what I will do in our film is that, you know, we take it in turns to be the director and the editor because it's important to work together, but there is a limit of actually give me some freedom, let me be creative and go with it. Because at the end of the day, if you're both going for the same vision, you're going to have different ideas. I mean, it's just subjectivity. But um, you can work together, yet still have some of your own pieces. And at the end of the day, the editor knows, like, it's Lisa Gunn. Um, she says, I think it's really good to leave the editor to play. Um, I've, she said... Um, She's got a methodology, um, she doesn't have a methodology that she, uh, yeah, she doesn't have a method that she imposes sort of, um, on everything she does. She says every job is different and, um, you know, there's no sort of thing that she imposes on it. She sort of lets the film dictate the method, um, 
We then watched a commercial, um, and this commercial, she told us that it was just a load of clips. It was a Nike sports one, and they, there was no direction or um, structure. And it was actually, they just gave her a load of clips, and it was down to her to create the narrative, which I really liked, and I think that's incredibly important that, you know, you realise the significance of the power of the editor, that they are in charge of the narrative. And, um, you know, having me personally on our film, knowing the script, knowing the way I, like, it's going to be, um, I, I can't, I have to look at the editing as if, is the narrative clear to someone who doesn't know the script? And I think that's where I might struggle, but I'm gonna do well. Moving on, because we've got five minutes, we're going on to six minutes already, this is absolutely appalling. Anyway, um, she said she had 24 hours to do the advert, which was very interesting. Um, and she had to impose the structure. Um, t -t 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 yeah, um, and then she described it. This is one of my favourite things she said. She says... Three weeks of doing a commercial is like being a nurse. Doing a movie is a year, and it's like a surgeon. I just loved how she compared them. Really good. Um, yes. She said, um, advice to us, which I really liked, is when you're stuck, she said, walk away and come back, because it gives you a fresh start. Um, she also said, show people. That saves so much time, um, because it sends you on the right track and they um, give some clarity to the piece, which I liked. And she described that as, it causes movement. Um, she says writers have an amazing thing where they are so involved and passionate about their material. They live and breathe it because they conceived it. Um, however, she said it's really important that writers just let it go when you're with the editor and me having um, wrote some of the script is for our film, I think I'm going to really have to let it go. Let it go, let it go. Um, seven minutes. Right. Um, she said the middle is a limbo. You get a little bit lost in the middle. Um, and then she said, here, and I would definitely employ this in my film, music can help solve a problem. Love working um, closely with a composed uh, uh, she loves it, um, she says it's an incredible tool, and balancing serious and comedy through music without pushing a narrative. She said, and I quote, I use music to see if a clip is working, the instinctive power of music, and I will definitely be employing that, because sometimes, a lot of the times when you're in the editing room, especially with the comedy, it's not going to have a lot of fluidity, and it's going to be hard to get the joke over, uh, communicate the joke, so I'm definitely going to see if music can help me solve that problem. She said it's a passionate process, so you will argue with the director, which I liked. Um, nearly at the end, two more minutes, um, she said she uh, cuts more brutally for comedy, which I think is important, Being our film being a comedy, I think we're going to have to bear that in mind and cut differently. She said every genre has a different cut, I look forward to finding that out, Lisa Gunn. Um, we then watched and another example of a non-linear storytelling. She says, sometimes, this is sort of when we got to the end of the interview and it got a bit fun. She said, sometimes I do my best work when I'm hungover because you're into survival mode. She said, deadlines are good, which is, I think, is a good advice. She said, they make you work hard and it's when I'm at my most creative. She said, stress is the demon for creativity. So go swimming or join yoga. Um, she said she does the dog pose, but anyway, um, then we had a Q&A session, and I, being Gazza G, Dane, Gary Gannon, um, asked her a question, I asked her, and I quote, what advice do you have for young people wanting to go into the creative industry, and how do you discipline yourself to work so hard, and she replied with, I'm just going to list the sort of replies, she said, don't do it for money, she says, who you surround yourself with is important. Make sure you're surrounding yourself with people who love it. Um, she says, uh, you should stalk people. She said that she got her first editing job by stalking the person and saying, give me a job, give me a job. So I like that. She also said, use materials such as YouTube, your phone, apps. She said, you've got all of these resources. Go on and use them. It's sort of free advertising yourself. Um... She said she started off working years for little money. Um, 
so she did and uh she, she did it because she knew one day she will do what she wants and have a nice paycheck which she knows and i would not mind that she also said um fear the material because that fear keeps you going that gives you sort of willpower and determination and finally she says if you really love it then you will do well um because it doesn't feel like work and you tune into what you love and that is all i have to say for lisa gunn so she taught me a lot about editing for different genres using musicality she gave me lots of advice for the future which i liked she gave me advice on how to deal with people around me when i'm editing um really inspiring she seemed like a lovely woman and it was probably one of the best masterclasses i've had um and it was lovely to be in york as well thank you this has been 10 minutes i watched some other people's theirs was like two four minutes i'm sorry i just was so passionate lots of love i hope you enjoyed the dead space